All right, I'm Matt Hill. I'm a curriculum designer at MRU, and here we are day three in the Inflation Yield Plan. And again, I'll be going through the slides just to give you kind of an idea of what we were thinking of how you know, the lesson would go, at least with respect to the slides. Of course, there's lots of breaks. If you go through the lesson plan, there's lots of breaks for activities and those sorts of things. So I'm just sort of giving you a feel for the slides. All right, we've moved into inflation. The way we motivate this is with one of the most famous games in uh, in econ classes. You're gonna have an auction, an inflation auction. Don't tell them it's about inflation, but you'll you're, that, that's that that that's the goal. Um, we have a you know we have a long write up uh, of this game um, uh, in uh, in our top five games, uh, which you can find at mru uh, org. And of course, the details of of it are in the lesson plan. So I'll, I'll go through it here as well. Basically, what you need. Three items, um, two sets of those three items. So you need three uh, three items and then the same three items again. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to auction them off. So you auction th the three items off, you hand some money out to your students. So the money can be jelly beans, the money can be Monopoly money, paper clips. The key is you want to have double the money in the second round than you have in the first round. Okay. So you auction the items off. This is the first round. You got your three items. Auction them off. All right. So they sell for whatever they sell for. Okay. You move to the second round. Collect everyone's money. Hand out new money. And again, the key here is that the money should be, the money that the students have in aggregate should be double what they had in the first round. And then auction off the same three items again. All right. Again, you probably want to actually give the items to the students from the first round. So not the same three items, just, you know, like if you have a stapler, uh, a pencil and a notebook, have another stapler, a pencil and a notebook. Second auction. Now the students in aggregate have double the money. And so the prices should be about double where they were in the first round. Okay. And you can, you know, record them here and the students have it in their student activity sheet to record it as well. And again, what you should see, this game has been played I don't know, thousands of times, tens of thousands of times in econ classes usually works. Um, unless you got some students that sort of like to mess around. I don't know, for whatever reason, they're trying to undermine you. I don't know. Almost always works. And what you'll see is the prices that the items sell for should be about double in that second round. And what that establishes is this fundamental relationship between the amount of money and prices. If you have the same amount of stuff, so in both those rounds, we had the same three items, same amount of stuff. The difference was we had double the money. And so what changes is not the stuff. And stuff doesn't become more valuable. It's just the prices go up. So higher prices, one of the places higher prices can come from is if we just have more money, but the same amount of stuff, that'll lead to Prices increasing. Now, this, of course, is um, inflation. All right. Just to, again, really nail down this concept. All right. This is the most important concept, basically, of the unit plan. This is inflation and where it comes from. But just nail down. Again, let's go through a thought experiment. We're on a desert island. We got three coconuts. We got $3. That's the only thing on the island. Okay. Really sad island. Um, how much are the coconuts going to sell for? You know, we're going to trade $3 for the three coconuts. And so they're going to sell for about a dollar each. Okay. If three more dollars wash up on the shore, we're on the island. Ooh, we got $6 now. Still three coconuts. We're going to trade the $6 for the three coconuts. The price of the coconut will have gone up to $2. We're not richer. We don't have any more coconuts. We don't, we're not eating more coconuts. We've got the same amount of coconuts. The only difference is the price level has increased. Okay. This again is inflation. If we add money, prices go up, but we don't get richer. And it's not like the things are more valuable because the price has gone up. It's just that there's more money. Okay. Now, if we actually get more stuff, if three mangoes wash ashore, then we actually are richer. Again, Going back to what true wealth is, true wealth is always goods, services, skills, talent. 
tangible things. Okay. Money just allows for us to trade those things. Money has no, you know, it has no value in and of itself. It's not wealth in and of itself. And it just allows you to trade for things that are actually valuable to you. So this is the fundamental relationship between money and prices. You have more money, prices go up, and therefore your money is worth less because it can buy less things on a dollar-dollar basis. If you have less money, then prices would go down. If we're back on the desert island and the you know dollar goes away, prices would come down. And now your money's worth more on a dollar basis because it could buy more stuff. That higher prices is, is inflation, the lower prices is deflation. All right, so this is the relationship, okay? And so you wanna ask your students, all right, let's get an understanding check. Let's see where you all are. Higher prices means money is worth what? More or less. Lower prices mean money is worth what? More or less. And this is a little counterintuitive for people. Higher prices, because people think, oh, higher prices. Things are worth more. They're not worth more. The money is worth less. So the actual item is whatever the item is, it stays the same. But your money is worth less because it can buy less stuff. With lower prices, your money is worth more because it could buy more stuff. So with inflation, you have more money, prices go up. That means your money is worth less. So with inflation, your money is worth less. You can buy less things. Okay. So let's connect this back to the first two lectures. So we do a little bit of retrieval practice with your students. Ask them what they recall about fiat money and how it differs from other types of money. Okay. And so with fiat money, the difference is, of course, it's not commodity money. So it has no value in and of itself. Because it has no value in and of itself, it can be created very easily. You know, the central bank can just print up the money. And as we just, just covered, as we add money to the overall money supply, we will get inflation. Prices will go up. And so this is the big downside of fiat money is there is a potential for inflation or high inflation. This is the danger. Okay. And that's what the unit plan essentially is, you know, about broadly is, you know, inflation. Um, but where that inflation comes from is expanding the money supply, which because of fiat money, the central bank now has the power um, to do. Okay. So now we're going to watch uh, one of our favorite MRE videos, or you're going to play this video for your students, just about hyperinflation in Zimbabwe and how this all worked, how this relationship all works. You know, pause at a couple points to um, you know to have to ask some questions. Again, these are all in the student activity sheet, and then of course you have the answers um, with the student activity sheet uh, answers. All right. So hyperinflation, when we have prices increasing by more than fifty percent per month, this is really bad. All right. This essentially destroys an economy. Prices keep going up and up and up. The money is worth less and less and less. People can't. You know, think about the future. They can't make plans about the future because the money's going to be worth less. It's hard to enter into contracts. And basically with hyperinflation, you know, if your central bank falls in that temptation to print too much money, it will effectively destroy the technology because the money will become uh, worthless. And so this is, you know, the real, uh, the real big um, danger. Okay. So that, you know, for the first part, we sort of established this relationship between, um, money and prices, which is, you know, prices going up, inflation. Now we're going to back up in this part and, you know, look at some real world data. So we're going to look at this relationship between, we're going to say, okay, is this true? You know, I just, just told you this thing, desert islands, you know, let's, let's get some real data. All right. So we're going to look at the relationship between the inflation rate, basically how much prices are going up and the money growth rate. How much did the central bank increase the amount of money. Okay. We're going to ask the students, what do they think? All right. We have four countries, which we've ranked, sort of mixed it up. So it's not, you know, it's not a perfect ranking. We've mixed it up. You know, these are the rank in terms of how much they grew their money supply. Argentina one, Poland two, Indonesia three, United States four. So what do you think their inflation rate was? Okay. Let's have your students guess. All right. And then we're going to watch the first part of this video, the first five minutes or so of this video, 
that has lots of nice graphs showing this relationship. Okay. We see it perfectly lines up. The country with the most, that grew the, that grew the money supply the most had the highest inflation. The country that grew the money supply the least had the lowest uh, inflation. Okay. Now, as a caveat, this is like an aggregate relationship. So oftentimes you may have, you know, we have, may have an expansion of the money supply, but with no inflation because of other reasons, or you may see like broad-based inflation because of supply chain shocks or something like that. So in the short run, not you may not see this relationship between the money supply and um, inflation, but in the long run, cross country, this relationship really pops out. So in the long run, if you print a bunch of money, you are going to get um, inflation. And, you know, that's what that last video showed you, all these different graphs kind of um, uh, uh, establishing this this relationship. We have these caveats in here just to say it's like, you know, you know, if you go year to year, you may, you may not see it, but you zoom out, you will see this relationship between money uh, creation and uh, inflation. This is where inflation ultimately comes from. In the exit ticket, we do some analogizing, asking the students like, all right, you know, let's let's think of an example from that you're familiar with. If everyone got an a, a, would the A's be would it, would an A mean more or less? And relate this to inflation. If you don't already have the unit plan, there is a link on screen. Or if you'd like to move to the next day, check out the next walkthrough video.